hello there guys and welcome welcome back to the channel so today perhaps a very very overdue video that has been quite highly requested maybe not directly but there have definitely been a lot of questions on my streams in regards of the subject so we're going to talk about how to make you cavalier if you're not already obviously so this video clearly is not meant for people who have already reached this progression level or who are thrown backer, but hey, I don't know, maybe you guys find it entertaining as well. And you can compare my video to your actual experience. Right, that being said, we're going to talk about where your current roster progression level should be in order to attempt this. Obviously, that highly depends on your own personal skill level in this game, as uh, many youtubers have proved that uh, if you know exactly what you're doing and exactly what are the things that you need to be aware of and things that you need to be able to cover you can get qualier quite quickly it can be done in like a week or two or whatever depending how much time you invest in it but obviously for 99.9% .9 of the people who pick this game up for the first time it will take several months right so what is the current roster progression level that you should be looking at well at the bare minimum, obviously, you should have, at the very least, a handful of 5 stars at uh, rank 3, rank 4 level. That is when you can start looking at becoming Cavalier. You don't need a rank 5, 5 star at all. You don't need 6 star champions at all. With rank 3 champions, it will be trickier, but it definitely can be done. Uh, I have two longer sets of streams on my channel where I basically do 6.1 only using outdated rank 3 5 star champions. And uh, yeah, it, it, it is a bit frustrating. You will uh, get KO'd along the way a couple of times, but it definitely can be done. Or ideally, more comfortably, you will have at least a couple of champions at rank 4. But which ones and uh, how should you kind of know when it's time to push? Well, first of all, one frequent question is, should you have Act 5 100%? No, not necessarily. In fact, I believe if you have a decent enough roster, it is uh, quite important to get Cavalier, as in do the first run through 6.1, and then only start dedicating yourself uh, more to side content and exploring like Act 5 and starting to explore variants and stuff like that. Obviously, uh, if you feel like you can tackle variants earlier, hey, go for it. But I think becoming Cavalier is kind of like the first thing that people should rush towards to in order to be able to unlock better uh, rewards, better glory stores, all that other stuff. And then you can take it a bit easier whilst you become Thronebreaker because that is much bigger undertaking. Right, so that is where I believe you should be. Uh, you should have a handful of uh, rank 4 5 stars ideally. Uh, or at the very least, a rank 3 5 stars. But which ones? And uh, there is no straight, simple, single correct answer. But there are five major things that you need to be aware of if you uh, expect yourself to be able to deal with 6.1. Wait, I'm at the wrong place. That's Act 5, 6.1. Right, here we go. Additional point to note is if you're not there, if you only have a couple of five stars, but you are very enthusiastic about this game, how can you relatively quickly get more five stars? Then uh, do know that typically monthly side event quests, that is not to say that monthly study events are not worth it, but if you want to put in a ton of effort, uh, most of the time the quickest way how to obtain significant amount of crystal shards typically is going to be through monthly side event quests because if you are willing to boost up and punch upwards you can uh, definitely get a couple to handful of five stars every month right there but again that kind of depends on your own determination and ability to play the game so before jumping into the variants before being able to become cavalier the quickest way arguably to grow your roster if you are able to play the game to a decent standard is going to be monthly side event quests. But there are five things that I have basically cut it down to that you need to be aware of and you need to be able to tackle to become a quality level player. I will also 
guide you through the easiest path of uh, every single quest. So this is going to be kind of like a mini completion guide. But the first thing that you need to be aware of is no retreat. No retreat catches a lot of people off guard, and it's one of those nodes that a lot of people hate, uh, and perhaps unjustly. Now, no retreat can be very, very, very bad node, but it really isn't in 6.1. And in 6.1, for most part, you can actually play around it without triggering it much. It does involve a bit of learning curve and a practice, and this Agent Venom fight is actually one of the trickier ones for the quote-unquote easy path. The easy path is Agent Venom, Red Skull, Iron Patriot, Punisher 2099, Nebula, and Gambit. That is pretty much the easiest path. Agent Venom is the hardest fight there, but it is also the first fight there, so there's absolutely nothing stopping you from going in there, practicing, uh, spacing, practicing AI movements, intercepts, all that other good stuff till you are able to get the fight down. Now, no retreat itself is a very straightforward node. If you dash back twice within a short interval, you're going to degenerate portion of your health. Now, there are two very important things to note. Uh, number one, for most part, you can just, as I said, dash back once and play more with your parry, play, play more with your block and rely more on your intercept. And number two is, if you have triggered no retreat, don't panic. Just understand that whilst the degeneration is active on you, you're safe in a sense that you can dash back as much as you can. So if you happen to trigger no retreat, utilize it fully and dash back as freely as you can. Uh, I'm not going to give the best counters for every single fight here, obviously, because we're talking about players who do not have access to majority of the five stars and stuff like that. But the main point is, if you have power control champions, they can be very, very helpful, because if you never have to worry about baiting out special attack or pushing an opponent to level 3, uh, then no retreat doesn't really pose much of an issue to you. So, for instance, if you use something like Magic or Vision or, I don't know, even Dormammu, uh, you can play around no retreat very easily by just, you know, not dashing backwards much and uh, power draining the opponents. And then on top of that, there is the ability to tank special threes, which is also quite helpful to have. Uh, but uh, keep in mind that uh, stuff like Gladiator Hulk doesn't really work for these. Oh, wait, Gladiator Hulk does it work? I don't remember. But either way, uh, again, chances are that you're not going to have these specific counters for these nodes. And it's uh, much more down to you playing around these fights the best you can than having the perfect counters. When it comes to the boss, uh, Sabertooth is actually one of the trickier bosses because of the Oscillate, which uh, makes the fight a lot more unpredictable, kind of, in a sense, and uh, no retreat. And on top of that, obviously, there's a ton of healing. So what you need to be able to do is to heal block him or heal reverse him with any of the champions that have access to Petrify. Uh, or heal block, such as, for instance, Warlock obviously would be a great option here. Or if you have unlocked Despair, which is, again, quite doubtful in majority of the cases, but if you have Despair, that, then champions that uh, place a lot of debuffs on Sabertooth will be the best. But realistically, most of the people who are doing this content for the first time will not have the perfect options. So what you need to be kind of aware of and ready for is just to kind of chip this guy down with a high damage output champion. Basically, whichever champion hits the hardest, get in there, do as much damage as you can, and chip him down. That is how I suspect most of the people initially end up getting this guy down, and unfortunately, it'll probably take a couple of uh, revives. Now, we can quickly jump in 712, which also poses a couple of problems. Uh, sorry, in 6.12. Uh, it's been such a long time since I have discussed uh, Act 6, but okay. So let's jump in 6.12, where I'm going to give a few pieces of advice as well. So the boss is Ultron, which is actually a very, very tricky boss there as well, uh, which we're going to discuss in a moment. Now, first of all, we're going to identify what I would call the easier path. And in my opinion, this one, when you teleport to Captain America portal and go to the left side, initially is one of the easier lanes. Uh, the main kind of like node, node combinations there on this map is special delivery and combo party, which is kind of fair enough. And then we 
have like explosive personality or stuff like that. But all of those are tech champions and uh, neither of them offer too much of a threat. The node that is kind of like a power drain if you get hit by special attacks. But only arguably tricky fight, I suppose, is Stark Enhanced Spider-Man. There's really, again, n not all that much going on in that fight. And uh, that is definitely the path that I recommend you go to and uh, you crash first. If you don't like that lane, then uh, I can recommend doing this uh, top right lane, which also seems to be fairly straightforward with a bunch of cosmic champions. Ideally, if you have like a decent mystic champion, then you shouldn't have much issue here at all. But the lanes aren't really the biggest issue here. The biggest issue here will, will be the Sentinel and the Ultron. Now, you do want to have a bleed immune champion to deal with the sentinel because of biohazard but other than that pretty much any bleed immune champion or any champion that's able to deal with bleed debuffs will function well enough it's a somewhat annoying fight obviously it's a sentinel but as long as you don't uh, kind of like bleed yourself out to death you're good and you're fine and then we have this aggression armor spry emp modification backup recovery spite special delivery and combo party ultron and this is again one of those fights where you will more than likely end up using some revives because uh it is a very hard fight uh especially for the progression level where you are presumably at and the biggest killer there is number one the weight which you can learn to play around if you are uncomfortable with uh, labyrinth of legends ultron's weight definitely recommend uh, doing some duels because uh, once you get a bit of practice you can predict when he will and will not await so that is something you can play around if you do not have a specific counter for however something that you can't play around really is uh, spite an emp modification so every time you trigger a buff he's gonna get that emp modification charge and then whenever he's gonna launch an attack uh, they're gonna put a shock on you so ideally you want to look at the champions that are shock immune and uh, obviously spite will punish you from having buffs as well. Uh, most people once again end up just kind of chipping away at the guy, nuking him down with highest damage champions because uh, at this point in the game you are not exactly likely going to have access to, I don't know, Red Guardian for instance is a perfect counter. You can play slow, you never gain a buff and it's perfect. You can solo this guy with like a rank 3 or rank 4 red guardian relatively easily quake can do it again i don't expect people at this level to quake him down perfectly ghost with hood synergy again not likely that uh, people will have the best and the most perfect answers for this fight but there's absolutely nothing wrong in slotting in like four or five uh, revives for this fight, bringing in high damage output champions and just uh, trying your best to chip away at this guy. Uh, I'm sure if you look up you can find the exact guides, but again, I don't think that people uh, who are watching this video for informative purposes will necessarily have the access to perfect champions. So my suggestion is uh, just, uh, yeah, collect some revives from free events and uh, use them well because this is about as good of a use as you can possibly have in order to achieve next progression level but uh, again quick noteworthy mentions would be quake ghost corbus uh, captain mal movie version can kind of nuke the guy down relatively well uh, as i mentioned red guardian she hulk can uh, easily solo this fight or relatively easily captain america infinity war if you have him awaken high sig which is unlikely uh, it's great and i'm sure there will be people that can point out many more champions but again for all intents and purposes you're probably gonna end up just uh chipping away at this guy without a perfect counter right so we can move on to the next uh quests and paths uh, well actually the next couple of bosses are fairly straightforward and the next couple of quests are fairly straightforward uh, so there is not too much to discuss i actually hate this entire book select the ui it's so annoying every time i try to record a video about something that is not act seven uh, but okay so the next boss is ghost uh, ghost is going to be very easy you can solo it pretty much with anyone i think only annoying note that it was limbo uh, the path that you want to take on this lane 
uh, is either just go straight up through this uh, harder lane, maybe a bit with Korg War Machine, or you can just go up until Vision, Deadpool, Agent Venom, Crossbones, Kingpin, Rogue, uh, Thing, and then Ghost Boss. So this is actually a very, very quick uh, quest that you can complete easily, and the boss has Limber, Aggression, Cruelty, so it's just kind of like a regular ghost fight. Uh, not much to worry about there. We're just going to move on to the next one. You don't need to be aware of much uh, at all. Uh, the next bigger thing that you will need to be aware of is uh, 615 Crossbones, which we're going to talk about in a second. But before that, I'm going to show you which path you probably want to take or which paths you probably want to take in uh, 614, which is a low-key boss, which again is very, very easy fight. Uh, with majority of the champions. Right. So, here we are going to jump to the teleporter here immediately, because the Rhino can actually turn out to be quite an annoying fight. And you can just teleport to Phoenix fight. Uh, now, here, as long as you have any ability to deal with some sort of healing effects, you're going to be golden. So you just go down, teleport to Phoenix fight, and uh, then you have Phoenix, uh, Sabertooth, Wolverine, Guillotine, and Hood, and that's it. And then you pretty much get straight to the boss, I believe, which is Loki. So that is the shortest and the easiest path, in my opinion. And the only thing that you really need to be aware of here is Dulled. That means that if you have buffs or if you place debuffs on the opponent, you will not be critting. But damage or time effects or guaranteed crits is an easy answer to that, or you're just gonna have a fairly long fight. But it's low key, it's not like it's you know, uh, Korg or thing or whatever. And again, uh, I don't know what my game is doing. I'm pressing end quest, it doesn't want to end the quest. Happy days, I can understand that fighting is getting tricky. Exiting a quest? Really? Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, we can move on to the next big uh, puzzle piece of making you Cavalier. Uh, Cavalier, or however you pronounce it. People always make fun of me for the way they say Cavalier, but uh, hey, what you can do about it? Uh, so long as they're having fun. Right, so. 6.1. Five, the big baddie. The big baddie crossbones. Well, first of all, uh, we're gonna go the path that you're meant to take. And the path is simple go straight down and then to the left to Superior Iron Man, Falcon, Sabretooth, Venom, She Hulk, Old Man Logan, and Winter Soldier. The only thing to be aware of in Winter Soldier fight is the buffet node. So if you have a chance to basically mitigate the healing, that would be perfect. Again, why despair, heal, block, or heal reverse options, whichever one uh, you have available to you, and whichever one uh, would work out better for you. The boss itself. The boss itself actually used to be harder. I personally believe that he's easier now. And crossbones. Crossbones is known to be kind of like the roadblock champion, but again, I do think it is easier now, because now technically... You can do this fight with pretty much any champion. But and most people say, but how? Like, there's this poison debuff active. Well, the thing is, if you have unlocked willpower, then you can see the node says inflicts poison, draining 100% health over 30 seconds. And that's it. Then the poison debuff expires after 30 seconds. Obviously, without willpower, that is the point you would die unless you have regenerated significant amount of health. But willpower does that. So, if you have willpower active, you can just bring in full health any champion at all whatsoever and uh, do the rest of the fight. Don't push crossbones level 2, play carefully, and uh, it can be done. It's not a perfect solution, but quite literally any champion can do this fight. Uh, if you have willpower and you play carefully. Other than that, any champion that has good enough damage output will do. That is poison immune. And uh, yeah, if you can take care of poison with a 
immunity or ability. And uh, now it's kind of like a lot easier to get this fight done, especially if you go to the path that I showed you, then you will not have to deal with Bane and you will only have to contest with uh, you will only have to contest with that Arc Overlord. And Arc Overlord is actually uh, less potent than Vigor was. So the fight has in fact become quite a lot easier and most champions can chip it down. I think I showed where a rank 3 Storm can do the fight. Basically in one of the videos about 1992 to 1997. Uh, Karina's challenge guide. But yeah, any champion that hits hard, willpower, or any poison immune champion that hits hard, and uh, put on some boosts, and you're going to be good. The key there is kind of like an active aggressive playstyle, bait out his level once, punish them, and then drop your level once, thus giving him more power to get to level 1, and uh, it will work out, it works out quite well. Uh, and uh, yeah, the fight has become a lot easier, and uh, the most important thing there now is just uh, poison immunity or having access to willpower and uh, large enough damage output and obviously a bit of practice maybe it is a good idea to uh, go and duel crossbones before you attempt this and then the last quest the last quest is with sentinel again i'm going to show uh, two possible paths that i believe to be easiest leading up to sentinel and then we're going to talk about the boss itself, and that will be it for today's video. Right, so let's take a look at uh, 616. Let's jump in there, and let's see what are our best options. Don't want to keep you guys any uh, much longer. Now, my initial completion, I actually ended up doing this all or nothing path. Uh, because if you have a champion with high enough damage output, you kind of don't have to worry about all or nothing. Or if you have pretty much any power control available to you. All or nothing, in a sense, makes these fights actually easier. Because you don't need to worry about baiting opponents' special attacks and doing anything with them. So if you have a suitable option, all or nothing path is uh, probably the best option for you to go. Uh, you can use champions that have access to town, champions that have access to power drain, steel, lock control or just ability to tank level threes or hit hard enough i remember plenty of people just brought in domino put on some boosts and parry heavy their way through all of these fights and then the only thing to take care of is electro if not then you will go straight up to the moon knight it's a very easy straightforward moon knight fight havoc uh, is a bit trickier obviously because it is havoc so how to counter havoc is to have an access to armor up above or use another hammock on you and cyclops if need be but uh, it can be done and then heimdall fight and then go to the left side here to this arc overload vigorous assault and re recovery basically it means when they have regeneration buff they will be unblockable but you can always just wait out those regeneration buffs because uh arc overload is not active 100 percent of the time neither are their regeneration buffs for most part except with like angela i think at the end and uh, it is definitely fairly straightforward easy opponents it's uh two wolverines a groot a superior iron man and angela so there's nothing really scary on that lane so my recommendations is either that all or nothing or that vigorous assault especially if you are fairly okay with landing an intercept now and then okay now let's try and tap this uh, Sentinel. And Sentinel is actually, for being the final boss, uh, relatively straightforward. Now with Sentinel, there are two nodes that make this fight annoying, really, which is Stun Immunity and Plague Mind. Plague Mind means that uh, in between having to bait out a lot of specials from Sentinel because he uses less power by using his special attacks, you're likely not really going to be able to throw special attacks at all in majority of the circumstances. And stun immunity obviously limits the way you can find your openings. However, all of that is something you can play around, right? You can punish Sentinel's level once, and uh, that's all you really need in order to find openings in this fight. The problem is that Sentinel's a tank. With all of the nodes and everything else that is going on here, uh, Sentinel's very, very tanky champion. 
So how do you get him down effect effectively? Well, my personal favorite solutions are guaranteed crit. Because Sentinel has quite a lot of like crit resistance or just, I don't know, tankiness. But uh, if you have champions like Corvus, like Ghost, like who are Wasp, uh, Wasp actually now doesn't do as well as she used to. So let's say Corvus, Ghost, or whoever else has guaranteed crits, definitely will work fantastic in these fights. Or any champions that do a lot of damage via debuffs. So for instance, even Void would be great. Void just slowly but surely would... Uh, damage or time him down to death or any champions that have access to meaningful significant amount of shocks or incinerates or ruptures or cold snaps or whatever else that we have obviously he's bleed and poison immune but he's not immune to any of the other debuffs and uh, for instance black widow deadly origins would be fantastic here and uh, last couple of suggestions are obviously robot counters like medusa like even relatively low ranked vision Arcus makes this fight uh fairly quick and uh now uh i suppose even nebula would work very well as well but in general any champion can do this fight it's just going to be long unless you find an effective way of delivering damage which again is either guaranteed crits or damage or time effects or some passive damage uh spider ham probably is actually very good for this fight as well Right, and that is about it. That is all you need to know to become Kvalier. And I genuinely mean it when I say that it is not as hard as I have heard most people make it up in their heads. You can truly, really get it done with like rank 3, rank 4, 5 star team using proper boosts and just knowing exactly what you need to be aware of. Get in a bit of practice against no retreat. That node is not as bad as many people make it out to be. And then just be ready to battle that Sabertooth, that Ultron, that uh, Crossbones, and that Sentinel at the end. And that is it. You will become Kvalier, hopefully in time for, uh, well, whatever goals you set for yourself. But uh, yeah, I hope this video is going to be helpful for at least a handful of you. As I said, there are uh, quite a lot of streams on my channel where I was doing this content myself using rank 3. Uh, five star champions only or when i was playing on my mini account and uh just having like a hardly i think i had five five stars at the time when i did it uh but uh, i was really just using uh, an a rank four a gun i think with like pretty much no masteries and boosts and uh we managed to get it done relatively well as well so yeah uh best of luck and uh let me know if you have any more questions see ya Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about